Good afternoon. You're watching Up to Data, a news business chat show in which we discuss all things technology, digital transformation, and of course, data. Today, we have the chief e commerce officer of Shalhu Group, the largest retailer in the region, Ryan Dendroyan. Thanks so much for joining us, Ryan. Thank you for having me, Shruti. Honeywell Smart Talk, a unified communications platform. As a data officer, what did your title entail? It was really focused uh, on, on an overall mission of making data you know, work better for the group so that we could create value for our customers. And really that fell uh, into three distinct pillars. The first was organizing our data, ensuring uh, that it was the right quality and that the business understood uh, what we had. The second was then figuring out ways how we could make that data more valuable. You can imagine, for example, taking uh, different customer data sources and combining them in a way that allows us to have a proper omni-channel view of the customer. Yeah. And then thirdly, ensuring that we could activate that data in the business and really make it useful through the use of analytics. Right. So I'm sure that task would have been a task for you. But the second part of it is because Shalhu Group is a massive conglomerate with 700 stores, 300 odd brands, uh, like you mentioned. So with with that scale of business, how is it that you trickle down all the data that you've received to all of these brands with diverse portfolios and make sure that the chiefs of all of these different brands can make sense of this data? So I think there's, there's probably two kind of key parts of the strategy, right? The, the first is about really aligning you know, ourselves and our, and our team, you know, with the actual business needs, mm -hmm. right? A trap, you know, especially from a data perspective that's easy to fall into is to yeah. say, oh, I see a problem. Let's go solve this problem. By the time you've solved it and are feeling very smug yeah. uh, about the whole situation, it actually turns out that it wasn't really a problem that the business was facing. So, you know, we started by, by, by trying to understand what are the real pain points in a business, you know, so that when we come up with a solution, we know it's going to be adopted. The second was then from an operating model perspective to organize ourselves in a way uh, where we partnered really closely with the business. Right. So, you know, maybe uh, some of this data, you know, conjures up a bunch of people, you know, sitting uh, in a basement uh, somewhere, sweating alongside yeah. racks of computers, you know, couldn't be further from the truth, right? Like from the very beginning, you know, we sat alongside and worked with our commercial counterparts so that we could, uh, uh, you know, again, bring the business along on a journey uh, and, and at the same time, you know, help empower them to be users of whatever products we created. So it's not really geeks in a garage then, it's it's a cumulative effort is what you're saying. Great. Uh, so Shalhu Group again, uh, the whole digital transformation there started a couple of years ago, right? And then last year we had a conversation with Patrick Shalhu and then he said that, you know, this shocking announcement where he's going to close 60 stores so the resources could be allocated to the digital operations. And this happened before COVID-19 was announced as a pandemic. So it was shocking for us initially as, you know, as partners, as stakeholders in the business, but it did make sense a couple of months later when we saw the repercussions of the crisis we are in, right? So what was it? Did, did Patrick really have a crystal ball? Do you have a fortune teller in your offices? Or was it a data-driven decision where you figured out that, you know, the market trends are going towards digital? So I think you know there's 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 probably a little bit of both, right? I think any 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 great CEO and Patrick is definitely uh, one of one of those. You know, has to have you know an an instinct, right? They they have to have a nose for for what's what's happening uh, in 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 the world. Um, that said, at the same time, uh, I think there was obviously also a, a kind of commercial data driven uh, aspect of this decision where we observed that uh, you know customers' behaviors you know were shifting. Right? right. I mean, digital channels are playing increasingly large part, uh, you know, even before the pandemic, as you as you as you, as you pointed out, uh, and therefore, you know, we knew that we needed to evolve because at the end of the day, you know, our mission, you know, is to delight the customer, you know, like today for a lifetime, and that means understanding, you know, uh, deeply, you know, what channels uh, and kind of experiences to kind of create uh, to match those expectations. Absolutely. So you did speak about, you know, understanding your customers is key. And this is what everyone's been talking about. So considering you are a luxury retailer where where things like value of the brand, story of the brand, etc. is just so important, you can get personalization from data. But how do you make sure there's a personal connection to, which is what your customers would ideally be craving for, right? When you're associated with a brand like, you know, a high-end luxury brand without naming names, 
you you want to be associated with the people behind the brand as well, not just numbers. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, you're, you're absolutely right that the pressure is definitely on when it comes to creating these data-driven experiences for luxury brands. Yeah. But I think the reality is this goes for any good, uh, you know, data capability. At the end of the day, you know, people don't, you know, relate to numbers. They relate to stories. Yeah. And so, you know, for us as well, you know, when, uh, you know, s trying to address these data challenges, we don't start with the data, right? We start, you know, with the customer. We start with their kind of journeys, their need states, mm -hmm. and understanding, you know, what does their experience currently look like, right? And where could data, you know, help uh, provide additional value, you know, reduce friction, provide a more rewarding uh, experience. Because at the end of the day, if we do our job uh, well, right, we're invisible. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the customer just walks out of the store, you know, or comes off the website or, or, or finishes the order on the app and goes, wow, that was great. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, you know, you're right. It's, it's definitely a high bar for luxury when it comes to these experiences. But that element of, of customer centricity, that element of storytelling, I think matters to anyone in any sector. Right. So for you and your team to be invisible, like you've just mentioned, uh, obviously it requires investment. So let's talk about the conversations you might have had with your CFO, right? We are in a crisis. There is cash crunch. Uh, we've seen a lot of retailers, including including luxury retailers, struggling. So it would mean redistribution of resources uh, in some cases. So at that point, what kind of technologies uh, got priority when it comes to you know improving customer experience? Tough question, Shruti. Uh, so I think, you know, like, like all of us will have, have experienced over the past, you know, 12 months, you know, decisions have had to be made, right? Tough decisions have had to be uh, made just to, in terms of, you know, safeguarding, uh, you know, initially just the you know, business continuity of, of certain ventures, but also as we now start kind of coming out of, of, of this crisis, you know, identifying where, you know, we can kind of see the greatest return, be it on, be it in terms of finances or, or, or customer yeah. uh, experience and satisfaction on our investments. Now, I think, you know, uh, the foundation for, for the kind of conversations that, that, you know, I had, for example, with our CFO really has to be um, uh, you know, honesty, right? It has to be uh, uh, rooted in a kind of very clear understanding of what drives value now and drives value tomorrow. Yeah. Because I think there's no right answer and, and there's certainly no, uh, you know, one maxim that applies to every single business. So in our case, we, for example, said, okay, what are initiatives that we need to tackle right now? Yeah. Um, you can imagine, for example, that on the inventory front, uh, when all your stores are closed, you know, there, yeah, is a certain uh, uh, pressure that builds up in terms of inventory that's going unsold. So clearly, there's an opportunity there to say, okay, how do we maybe drive the sales uh, of particular uh, items? You know, that new seasons are coming in. Uh, you know, and how do we uh, just quickly alleviate? some of this pressure. Yeah. At the same time, you know, investing in, for example, you know, uh, personalization and customer insights, you know, might, you know, in the middle of, let's say, lockdown last year, not have felt like the most pressing problem. But now, you know, almost a year later, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing that pay huge dividends because we've invested in these capabilities that now allow us to, you know, engage and re-engage customers in a very kind of like natural, uh, personal manner that we yeah. would have had much more difficulty with had we not made those investments at a time. Honeywell Smart Talk, a unified communications platform that connects device-enabled employees, allows team members to meet and communicate virtually.